The U.S. Air Force is asking companies to submit ideas for a next-generation hunter-killer drone to replace the MQ-9 Reaper. It's seeking a drone that may incorporate artificial intelligence and could be inexpensive enough to be considered expendable. In a request for information solicitation posted on the government's acquisition and awards website, the service said it will begin accepting ideas for the next generation UASISR strike platform, an improved unmanned aerial system that has both intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, and strike capabilities. Companies should offer autonomy, AI, machine learning, digital engineering, open mission systems, OMS, and attributable technology, among other attributes, according to the RFI, posted June 3. Open mission systems are designed to be modular and easily upgraded over the system's lifetime. Digital engineering allows developers to simulate parts through computer models before development. The service is looking for a cost-effective drone, possibly cheap enough to be considered attributable or expendable. Air Force Materiel Command, which is leading the search, said developers are encouraged to consider or assume the Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL, Skyborg program as the primary UAS autonomous baseline solution for the next-gen strike drone. Parallel to the Air Force's proposed Loyal Wingman program, which aims to send out drones ahead of fighters to act as scouts the AFRL has been developing the Skyborg program, seeking to pair AI with a human piloting a fighter jet. The Air Force launched an official solicitation for Skyborg last month. While the service is expected to lay out details for its MQ-9 replacement plan in its fiscal 2022 budget, the first delivery for a Reaper follow-on is expected in fiscal 2030, with a projected initial operational capability sometime in 2031, the solicitation states. The Air Force revealed through its fiscal 2021 budget submission that it plans to buy its final 24 Reapers this year, cutting the total buy to 337 aircraft from the planned 363, Air Force magazine reported in February. Dr. Will Roper, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics, told lawmakers in March that, while the MQ-9 has taken on robust operations encompassing both ISR and strike for more than a decade, it simply isn't suited to the high-end fight for which the service is preparing. The Reaper has been a great platform for us, Roper said before the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Tactical Air and Land Forces. But there are things that are more high-end military unique, things that are meant to be able to survive even in a contested environment. A lot of technology will have to go into that, and there will likely be expensive systems, but we also see a lot of opportunities to bring in commercial technology, push the price point down, have systems that we can take more loss with. In 2017, commanders expanded the mission set of the larger, faster MQ-9 as the Air Force began phasing out its unmanned cousin, the MQ-1 Predator. That year, the MQ-9 bagged its first air-to-air -air kill of another small, aerial vehicle in a controlled test, showing it had the ability to conduct air-to-air -air combat. The MQ-1 officially retired in 2018. But on June 6, 2019, U.S. Central Command confirmed that a Reaper had been shot down by Iran-backed rebel Houthis, with Iranian assistance. Another U.S. MQ-9 was shot down over Yemen by Houthi fighters that August, according to unnamed U.S. defense officials who spoke to Reuters. As we look to the high-end fight, we just can't take MQ-9s into the battlefield, Roper said. They are easily shot down, and so what we are preparing to do on the acquisition side as we take down the production line is build the next generation of systems. The U.S. Air Force has formally launched its search for an unmanned air vehicle UAV, to replace the General Atomics Aeronautical Systems MQ-9 Reaper beginning in 2030. The service is conducting market research to find its next medium-altitude UAV for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR, as well as air-to-ground strike missions, the Air Force Materiel Command, says, in a 3 June Request for Information RFI.
The MQ-9 was given initial operating capability in 2007 and has been used extensively against insurgents and terrorists in the Middle East. Its flight endurance of 27H allows the UAV to loiter above battlefields for long durations. That has made it a favored air-to-ground strike aircraft against combatants who often blend into the surrounding populace and must be picked off at fleeting moments, so as to avoid hurting or killing nearby civilians. However, the UAV is vulnerable to surface-to-air missiles. As the USA pivots towards great power rivalries against China and Russia, countries with sophisticated and long-reaching anti-aircraft missile batteries, the MQ-9's potential is limited, according to the USAF. The service wants a UAV that embodies what it gets from the MQ-9, but with capabilities to operate in a new era of more advanced threats. The service also wants ideas for alternative ways to support future lower-end, lower-cost ISR missions, which may include initiatives to modernize, augment, and or replace existing systems, it says. The USAF plans for the UAV to have an initial operational capability by the third quarter of the fiscal year 2031. To make that goal, initial deliveries are planned to start in the fourth quarter of FY2030. The next generation UAV is expected to integrate certain advanced technologies including autonomy, artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital engineering, open mission systems architecture, and attributable technology, the USAF says. The service says it has not yet decided on the structure of the upcoming acquisition competition. However, it wants to have multiple competitions around the air vehicle, automated ISR sensors, and data exploitation, and ground control stations, systems, and suites, all adhering to open architecture principles with an emphasis on welcoming innovative solutions form small businesses. The potential program would have three focus areas, future medium altitude UAV ISR and strike solutions, innovative development business practices, and digital engineering initiatives. The USAF wants to know about aircraft currently being developed or already developed that can adopt its advanced technology priorities. Solutions from the commercial marketplace that are scalable to a military platform are highly encouraged, it says. Due to the current fiscal constraint environment, interested parties are highly encouraged to propose solutions for reduced life cycle cost. The service also wants information about opinions on the best approach to integrate advanced technologies into a single platform through the implementation of modular open systems architecture principles.